Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to today's class, um, Intro to Data Science with Python. We're going to go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is start up our Jupyter Notebook. So in previous classes, we have gone over installing Python, adding um, Miniconda to be able to control packages and environments, we created an environment uh, with Conda and installed Jupyter Notebook and IPython and have gone through some of the basics with Python. So without further ado, let's go ahead and we'll go to our training directory. Um, and I'm just going to start my environment. So I do Conda activate. Uh, I have my data sign. Uh, Data science, have my data science um, conda environment. You can see with the parentheses here that this is the environment I have here uh, installed Jupyter um, and NumPy and quite a few of their dependencies. So now that I'm in my conda environment, I can check out my Python version. So I have Python 3.82 which Python is under uh, user Aaron uh, Miniconda environments data science. So you can see I'm using from here the Python executable from my uh, data science directory or my data science environment. And I'm using Conda from this same folder. All right. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to, uh, I guess what I need to do first is start my Jupyter Notebook. Um, let's see, data science, PyData book. And if you're new here, I'll show you. Um, search for PyData book. And we're using the Jupyter Notebooks from here. So right here on GitHub the author of the data analysis with Python or Python for data analysis book, Wes McKinney has published all his notebooks. So you can clone or download uh, the notebooks, which I've done. So you can see here, I'm uh, starting the notebook. I, this is literally cloning the repository. And it brings up Jupyter. It launches a web server on my local computer here, localhost port 8888. And it shows all my notebooks. We've gone through uh, setup and chapter true. In chapter two, we introduced um, IPython, the, um, the interactive Python console. And we've gone over some of the basics of Python, data types, uh, loops, um, conditional statements, and so forth. And today, we're going to cover chapter three, which is going to explore in a little more depth, the, uh, the different data structures, lists, tuples, uh, dictionaries, uh, I may accidentally call them hashes, M many other languages do, key value pairs, um, sets, as well as talking more about functions and reading and writing data from a file. Now, reading data from a file is important in data science because that's often how you get your data. Alternately, you could be using a database, either a relational database, SQL database for getting data, or a hierarchical or a document store, a document store like MongoDB, where you might have a nested structure of keys and values. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in here. Um, tuple, tuples are a, a list, but uh, specifically a tuple is ordered. You can see here our tuple four, five, six, and um, just using commas. The parentheses are optional for a single list. You can see you can create nested tuples here. But let's just go ahead and run the first one. We're going to do all our exercises both in the Jupyter Notebook um, as is. We can just hit run. When we're focused on a specific code section, we can hit run here. And it shows our input is tuple equals four, five, six. And then we print our tuple and our output is four, five, six. Now you might also remember we have IPython uh, 
that we can execute from the command line, which is my preferred way of running it. Um, so I'm going to create another a console window, make the font a little bit bigger so you can read um, for those watching on small screens. Let me adjust the size here. Um, all right. And then what I want to do is I want to do conda activate again, uh, data science. Let's get rid of that long list. There we go. All right. So we're just in the, I'm just in my training directory. Um, it's just here under my username. So now that I'm here, uh, what I want to do is I want to type IPython. Now, if you don't have IPython installed, you can do conda install IPython. Um, IPython is installed when you just do conda install Jupyter, Jupyter with a Y. Uh, Jupyter is built on top of IPython, and you'll recognize that because it has all the in and out. So I just want to type IPython to get my con interactive console here. Um, so the IPython console extends or wraps the traditional Python uh, REPL. Um, we can do things like this, print high or hit. Um, or we can uh, create, as we will, a tuple. So I'm, I'm going to call my tuple just T. Uh, and we can, we can create multiple values. Now, a tuple is to be distinguished from a list. A list uses brackets to distinguish its elements, and let's, let's give it different numbers so that we can tell them apart. All right, so our tuple, clear that. Our tuple looks like one, two, three, four, and our list looks like five, six, seven, eight. You can see um, the way Python denotes these is parentheses are a tuple, and a list is um, with square brackets. Um, they both are ordered, so I can look at list sub-zero, I can look at tuple sub-zero, and it will give me um, the first element. Now remember, zero is the first index. Um, you always do i for index, i equals zero, i, uh, oops, i equals i plus one, now i is two, or you can do i plus equals one. Now i equals three. Um, oops. <laughs> I can print i as well. But my, my ipython console, like, just like my traditional python console, will, when I have any value, it will do an output. Now print doesn't give an output because the print doesn't have a return value, right? Um, so I can go ahead and do print question mark, and I can look at the print command or the, the, the documentation, the doc string for print. So it says print value separator flush false. Okay. And it doesn't have a return value. Um, so using NumPy as an example, um, I believe we went through an example where we did uh, uh, np dot random dot rand int right and random int can give me a value between one and ten the first value is inclusive the second value is exclusive uh, anyway so it gives me a random value what I want to do is I want to look at my documentation here now I can do the question mark like this um, and it shows return random integers so rand int has a return value print doesn't have a return value so when I type uh, rand int, it gives me an output. When I type print, and I'll actually print this random value, let's print two of them. So we're adding two random values between one and 10. Um, and you can see it can be greater or less than. It was just coincidentally six uh, both times. And it can be, so it'll be somewhere between two and 19 because 10 is the upper bound, one is the lower bound. So it can be a one, it can't be a 10. Um, anyway, 
So print doesn't have an output. Print writes to the screen or the console or to whatever output stream you're, you're pointing to, um, but it doesn't have a return value, so it doesn't have an output. Um, so i uh, is a number. Remember, we were counting i plus equals one, which means that's a shortcut of saying i equals or i equals i plus one, or um, i plus plus doesn't work in Python. Oops. Um, strangely, most languages would recognize i plus plus. Python doesn't. Um, anyway, so the in out and we can also reference in, and it's, it's a history of my commands. I can look at in uh, 36 and um, that's going to say in 36 because it's my most recent. Um, I can, whatever my third command in this session was. So it was, it was T. Um, what was four? Oh, here we go. Uh, so I was printing my tuple T. Uh, so in four is L equals um, whatever. And I can look at my output, my output four, for instance. Um, uh, having trouble typing this morning, please bear with me. So you can see my output each has a number. Um, so there wasn't an output four here. There was three, five, six, seven, eight, because not every in has an out. So we can jump back up. Oh, I just missed seeing um, number four. Apparently my scroll back doesn't go that back that far. Anyway, so we can see here, that's what it's doing the same in my Jupyter Notebook. This is input one and output one. If I run this again, it's now input two and output two. And I can also, if I want, print, uh, output two and it'll change my in and out to three um, well it didn't uh, do my output because of the print statement um, all right so and then the output two is what I got previously it's so the output is the value or of, of the variable in this case or the um, the return value. So there we go. All right. So IPython is executing behind the scenes and rendering on this web page on this Jupyter notebook. That's just what I wanted to reiterate here. Now let's go ahead and look back at tuples, nested tuples. So here I have um, one tuple with parentheses four, five, six, comma, and then another tuple seven, eight. So that's the same. We'll run this and. It has no problem with that. It creates two tuples. You can see it adds the outer parentheses. We could have just um, specified our outer parentheses here. And I think it's a good practice, just like in some languages, semicolons are optional, JavaScript, or brackets might be optional for like a single line block. It's a good practice to be explicit and include your outer uh, parentheses on tuples. Um, you can see as Python prints the output, it does so anyway. So we can see here, we can have, what is this here? Uh, this third set. Um, let me reload this so I can refer to them each at a time. I just want to change my input and output numbers so I can refer to them. Thought I restarted. Okay, it's going to run all my code. So it's going to run every one. And you can see it's going through each and it jumped down to the bottom. Okay, what I wanted to do is be able to refer to my output. So output one is a single tuple. Output two is this nested tuple. Output three, um, what is this part here? Now, this um, tuple 402, uh, isn't related to this output, but let's go ahead and look at this in IPython. So I'm going to hop back over to my console, clear this, and I've got tuple 402. What does it do? Um, well, 402 is a list, right? So if I do, uh, let's do 
and just keep it consistent. T equals tuple four zero two. Okay, so we've got T, and you can see it creates this tuple. What it's doing is it's taking the constructor for tuple, right? So the tuple function creates um, a function or, or creates a tuple. It returns a tuple. And we can see that. Um, now, you can do help this way. The old fashioned way of doing help is help on any function or class, and you can get it. See, class object, tuple, iterable. So this is the constructor. It takes as an argument an iterable. Um, if the argument is a tuple, the return value is the same object. Now, what it's not saying here is if the um, argument is a list, because that's really what's going on. Oops, we don't want to look at the Jupyter output. If what's going on is if we're passing a list, right? List equals, you know, four, five, six. And then I've got the type of list, or the type of L is a list. Um, the type of T is a tuple. Um, if I do, um, we'll, we'll use T2, or, uh, T2 equals tuple, this constructor function for tuple, and I pass in L. What does it return? Well, let's look, the type of T2 is a tuple, and T2 is 456. So T2 sub one is five, and it's equal to L sub, uh, I'm having a great time typing L sub one, because L sub one is a list, or is the, the second value of the list. So the, the values within the list and the tuple are both integers, right? But the items themselves are different. So you can see type of L, type of T sub one are both integer. Now, T2 does not equal L, even though the values within them are the same. All right, so we can see here this next one, tuple string. Um, it takes a string as an argument, and what does it return? It returns a tuple of the individual characters. So let's go ahead and try this. Equals tuple, hello. We look at, uh, we look at T3, here we go, and T3 sub, uh, we'll use three should be an L. The type of that is a string, a single character string though, uh, because Python doesn't have a difference between character and string. At least I don't think so. Let's research. Is there any difference between string and string? Uh, Google doesn't know. Python does not have a character type. That's what I thought. Okay, let's, let's close these other tabs down. Okay, so we're, we've got a tuple. A tuple that takes a list converts the values in the list to a tuple. A tuple that takes a string uh, breaks the characters in the string up into single character strings and creates that tuple. Now, what happens if we take a tuple and we create a list that contains integers, Floating points, characters, and strings. Now, we can do it this way. 
with parentheses. What does it do? Um, in this case, it doesn't create a tuple. It just returns the list. But if we call the tuple constructor function on that, now that's kind of tricky. The constructor function takes parentheses, but in this case, this is a bit uh, ambiguous in Python. The arguments for a function are put in parentheses, but the values of a tuple are also put in parentheses. So the tuple is not the same thing as an argument, although an argument, let's think about it. Um, Items that are in a list that's ordered that are assigned to essentially, or that are associated with some ordinal value, you know, A, B, C, D, one, two, three. Um, that kind of makes sense for a function. And in most cases, this is true, except in Python, functions can also be named, function arguments can also be named or you have your wildcard, your, your quarks. We won't get into that. But anyway, or we will get into that, but not today. So now we created a tuple passing in a list. What do we have? We have a tuple with different types. So our list is converted. One, two, four, about five, C, and strings. Now, what if we did this? We create a tuple and, um, and then we pass in another string as another item in our tuple. Tuple expected at most one argument. Now, I could create a tuple and within the tuple, I contain a list and a string. So you can see here, tuple sub one is the string, tuple sub zero is the list. And we can check type of tuple sub zero is list, type of tuple sub one is string, and type of T is a tuple. So a tuple contain, a tuple can contain other basic types, uh, data structures. It contain, can contain integers, it can contain strings, it can contain, can contain floating points. It can also contain lists, strings, sets, and so forth. All right, so we see here, tuple, um, this shows here that we're passing in two things. We're passing in a list and, um, or we're passing in a nested list here. So in this case, we're going to run this in our console for clarity. Oh, my shift key was sticking. Um, and we can look at tuple. Um, it contains, it breaks the first list down, the outer list becomes the arguments of the tuple. So we have a tuple with three elements, right? So we can do length of tuple, has three elements. And the second element, um, tuple sub one is a list. Whereas tuple sub zero is a string. It doesn't break that string up because it's, nested within that list. It only goes one level deep and tuple sub two is a bool. Uh, it's true. Uh, all right. So what it's saying here is tuple sub two is uh, equals false. Now, what is it saying? It's saying that you can't write. It does not uh, support item assignment. So if we create here, here we come to our first practical difference between a list, right? A list equals one, two, three, one, two, four. And, uh, of course in Python, um, we always count, uh, like our King Arthur or one, two, five, sorry. One, two, three, sir. Five, five, three, sir. Um, list we can assign the value of list sub two is four. Um, that should be a five. 
and now we have list one, two, five correctly. Tuple is already correct, but we want, we want to correct, say we want to correct King Arthur. Uh, the third element in our list, index two, is it should actually be three, sir. Um, and King Arthur still says five. Um, so tuples are immutable. Try and add an element to a tuple, nope, the third element. Tuple object does not support item assignment. So tuples are immutable, lists are not. That makes them more efficient than lists because you don't have to build into the data type those methods for appending elements, for uh, finding and inserting, uh, replacing. Now, if we try and run this, we can append though. So I can't just assign tuple sub three, but I can do tuple append four. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, I see. It's a it's appending to the list. Okay, so let's look at T. Let's let's recreate a T. Okay, we've got one, two, um, then we've got four, five, six, a list inside, and then we've got a string. All right, so, oops, I got a typo there. T is a tuple. All right, type of tuple sub one, that's the two, uh, is in your type of Tuple sub three is a string, well, try and press the two, is a list. So what I can do now is I can do tuple sub two dot append um, seven. Now if we look at two, the list within the tuple can be modified. So can the string, oops. Okay, tuple sub three dot append. String has no uh, object append. I wonder, can we modify a string? It knew I was using Python. Hmm. Interesting. Join, that, that will work. T sub three, anyway. And then we, um, wait a minute, I'm doing that wrong. Typing is my friend. T sub three is hello. I was trying to type an S. Interesting, so it only returns so if I do S equals T sub three, I get S. Now if I do S dot join, uh, I was trying to add an exclamation point. Oh, so join must return. Oh, it, it's joining a list. Huh? So let's look at a, okay, concatenate any number of strings. The string whose method is called is inserted in between each given string. 
the result is returned as a new string. Oh, <laughs> never mind. All right, someone here to help me out. Looking at the Zoom chat. All right, so I wasn't able to get into uh, Slack today, but anyway, let's let's skip that digression. We need to get past tuples and get into other elements. We've already been talking about lists, but the next thing in here is uh, it's going to talk about lists and dictionaries and sets. So here on our last one, it's saying tuple um, true cannot be assigned to false. That's all it was going till I went off on my tangent. But if we run append to the string, that's right, we left that off. We can keep rerunning this and it's just going to keep adding threes. Oops. I'm going down the list. Three, three, three. Okay. So I want to restart just so I can get my clean output. What changes did I make today? This computer is creeping along. Um, I'm going to go through and record individual setup steps in each of, for each component. So I'm going to record a video showing specifically, this is how you install Miniconda. This is how you set up an environment. So a bunch of short videos um, between, you know, one and 10 minutes showing how to set up and install each little thing. All right. So going back in through here, we try to, um, let's see, we're at appending threes and we're running that again and again. Okay. Interesting. It didn't update my output. So how do I clear this? Yes, I want all variables to be lost. It's like saving them cached, I think, or something. So if I just kill this off and uh, restart it. So th yeah, like I said, this computer is, is, is running really slow this morning. But interestingly, I fired up a, oh man, it's, it's at least a 10 year old uh, Mac mini. Um, and it's doing rather well. I, I, I cleaned off some files from it and its performance is pretty good. It, um, I don't even know what version of Mac OS it has. I haven't used it since 2010, maybe 2012. Um, Anyway, an old Mac mini, still totally responsive. I think this might be running out of disk space. It might be swapping. Now I'm going to diverge and see. Oh yeah, we are just, uh, well, we've got seven gigs available out of 100 and some. All right, back to our notebook. Let's kind of breeze through this stuff. We've done a lot of comparison with lists and tuples, so we're not going to need to dwell on what's in a list or what are the functions on the list. We'll just read through the examples. All right, so nested tuples, assigning does not support assignment. Tuples are immutable, but you can append or modify, for instance, lists or other objects within a tuple. Um, What are we doing here? We're combining two tu three tuples 
into a, yeah, so these three tuples, this is the first tuple, zero, none, foo. Let's see if we can make the font size bigger. There's probably, um, probably a way to change the style sheet on here. I'll investigate changing the style sheet to make the font bigger within a notebook so that it's more readable. That's probably too big. All right, that looks reasonable um, based on experience of how it's going to look on a phone. All right, so it combines these three tuples, four, none, foo, six, zero, and bar into one big honking tuple. All right, now when you multiply tuples, hmm, what happens here? You, you essentially double it. So if I did foobar times two, it would go foobar foobar times four. Well, that's just going through the moon. Foobar 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 um, beyond all recognition. Unpacking tuples. So a tuple, we create one, four, five, six, A, B, C. Now this is where you get the multiple return values. Return values return as a tuple and um, it, is, it can optionally assign them to multiple values. So unpacking this tuple, B becomes this single value of five. Um, we start with, uh, now this is an outer, this is a hidden nested tuple, right? So it really looks like this, four, five, six, seven. So this is a nested tuple. We run this, let's go ahead and copy this into our, um, uh, our shell, not here, here. So we've got tuple, we've got tuple sub zero is four, one is five, and two is six, seven. So what it wants to show is a type of tuple sub two is a tuple tuples. Tuples can contain tuples. Um, now, if we unpack this, Right, we can do A comma B comma C equals, uh, oops, equals tuple. A is four, B is five, and C is six, seven. What they're showing is you can nest your unpacking. Now C and D are just integers. So by having a tuple, uh, a nested tuple unpacked and creating this tuple here, it totally, I don't even know if it's creating a tuple, but it unpacks it and we each have these individual values. All right. Temp equals A, um, A equals B, B equals temp. Let's try running that. All right, a comma b equals one comma two. So it's assigning, remember, that's the same thing as saying a comma b equals one comma two. b comma a equals a comma b, interesting. So it just switched them. Now we're getting interesting. We're able to switch the order of a tuple by reassigning it. So let's go ahead and run this block. Oh, and the output is one, the last value here. So sequence, a sequence is a list of tuples. A equals one, two, three, and then, so it's breaking up our sequence. Our sequence is our list, and it's passing in a tuple. So we can, we can unpack each tuple in our sequence. 
values equals, so this is again, just a tuple, one, two, three, four, five. Um, a comma B and the rest of the values. So, and this is the way that um, quarks work. Um, so I can create a tuple. Now I'm gonna create a bunch of numbers. All right, so I'm creating a tuple here. And now what I wanna do is I wanna unpack this, right? So I wanna do A, B, and C, star C equals T. A is 12, B is three, and C is a list of all these values. It takes all the values and all the remaining values. My tuple. That's what the star does. Um, now a comma b comma star underscore. I think it's just saying, okay, so we've got values here. We didn't run that one first, so it didn't have anything in here. And then we can print a. A is one. B is two and underscore is the rest of the values. So it's just showing that uh, underscore is a regular character, um, but any, by convention in Python, a value that begins with an underscore is, is hidden or private because Python doesn't have private variables um, or private, um, properties on objects. So let's look at methods. You can count the number of values in a tuple. Count is a method on a tuple. Um, so I can make a tuple. Uh, well, I can make a list. I'm going to do that. One, two, five. And my list, of course, is six, seven, uh, three something like that. So I can do t dot count. Oh, oh, I'm counting the number of twos. I'm not counting the size. I'm not doing length of t or length of l. Uh, I'm doing uh, t dot count. Uh, how many twos are in this? So if uh, t is 1.2.2.2.2.4, um, now if I count the number of twos, there are four. If I count the number of fours, there is one. So that's what count is doing. Okay, a list, let's take a look at this list. A list is here, a tuple is a set of strings. B list um, creates a list from a tuple. Um, so you can see here we have a list from this tuple. And list sub one, of course, is peekaboo. All right. We can get a range with a list. So range uh, sub 10 will return a range object. Now I can get R sub one will be one, R sub two will be two, R sub nine will be nine, and uh, R sub zero is zero. So range, this range 10 is like saying zero and nine. Um, but I can also be one comma 10. And so now the length is only nine, because remember first value is inclusive, Second value is exclusive. That's a rule that I don't know if it's consistent in Python across all things, um, but for a range and for, um, I forget what our other example was. Um, it is exclusive for the second value. All right, so what I can do is I can use the list constructor and take a range 
and it will return a list from my range. So my L, oops, uh, I wanted to create a list. L is a list. List sub one is going to be the same thing as R sub one. Uh, I can also do tuple uh, on a list or on a range. So, oops. So I'm using the constructor tuple and passing in a range and it converts my range into a tuple. All right. So you can create a range, a list from a range, tuple, or vice versa, any of those. Okay, with a list, you can append. So you can see here I have this list, this B list that I got from my tuple, and I just append the value. So if I'm working with a tuple, um, remember a tuple is immutable, and I find, well, wait, I need to, uh, I need to modify it. Um, then what I need to do is I need to convert it. I can convert it to a list. Now, if you have a very large set, welcome Oscar. If I have a very large group of data in a tuple and I want to convert it to a list, that's going to be inefficient and slow, especially if I have to um, move it around and, and change it back. So if you have a small tuple, and you want to change it to a list, that's fine. Um, but don't make a practice of swapping back and forth between lists and tuples. Hey, Oscar, um, have you had trouble joining? Hi, uh, Aaron. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm, I, I don't know, the, the, the meeting was uh, 10 in, in your clock time, in your yeah. Mm, that's weird because uh, the Zoom window appears and say that I'm waiting that the the host of meeting approve the or, or start the meeting. Something like so that. So I did see just a minute ago that it came up with you uh, and it said approve. Um, I may have missed it earlier if it had, if you'd come on briefly and I didn't see uh, the click to invite. What I need to do is I need to make sure that the meetings uh, will just welcome people and then um, if I can have someone help moderate and boot someone out who, you know, is doing anything inoffensive. Anyway, so yeah, I've, I've just continued by myself today. Uh, th so there will be a recording. We're going over tuples and lists and uh, other basic data types. Like we'll cover um, briefly sets and dictionaries as well today. So I apologize for that. No, no, don't worry. Okay. So do, do, you have, do you have it set up where, uh, do you have the Jupyter Notebook for the data analysis with Python book? Yeah. Okay, so you can follow yeah. all the examples on your own as well, great. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going through, I'm, I'm gonna wrap up here in the next few minutes um, and then we can probably just have a brief conversation between the two of us since no one else is here anymore. Um, but anyway, so talking about lists and tuples, uh, we're just looking at the methods for lists, right? You can append to a list, you can insert to a list, which the difference between append is um, it's adding dwarf to the end of a list. Um, to insert, it's adding something at a certain position. So you can also, uh, I believe you can prepend. Um, Uh, what is it? Is it push? We can pop, but we, uh, all right. My curiosity, uh, Python list prepend. Maybe all we do is we insert at index zero. Yep, um, insert at zero, okay. So that's strange, I thought there might have been a... a, a uh, you need What's to that? specify the index with insert? Yeah, oh, uh, with no index, uh, it goes to zero. So if I go 
Uh, so that's going to add two reds. If I if I pass no index, uh, that doesn't work. So the the way to prepend is insert zero. All right, and then I can change that to blue or whatever. All right. So insert takes an index, um, and you could do something really silly like insert at list dot um, or, or li insert uh, length of list uh, uh, b list. And it'll uh, add it to the end. So I guess the logic in Python here is one way of doing things um, and make sure it's a silly way because, you know, money Python. Um, you don't want to have to get the length to append. So they have an append function uh, built in. They don't have a prepend function built in because, well, you always know the initial index is zero. So it can be done. Still, I'd like to see it. Um, and now we have green at the beginning. All right. Now, that's very strange too because you have pop and now a, a stack, you can push or pop things onto a stack. So looking at this as a vertical stack, we're pushing things onto the top of the list and we're pushing it down. I think of like if you've ever been to like a cafeteria or wherever where they have those spring-loaded um, trays were the plates and and you push the plates down onto them and then you take one plate up and it pops off and the spring pushes the rest of the stack back up um i haven't seen one of those in a long time so i don't know if that analogy relates to you or anyone but anyway a, a stack you push things onto a stack and it pops off it's like uh, it's like uh lifo Lifepo yes. week? Yes. Um, last in, first out. That's the way to think of it, yeah. So anyway, you can pop things off the list. Now, um, I'm going to make this list a little bit cleaner so that when we pop it off, because I've been manipulating this when I run my next one, now when we pop off, we're going to see that um, – wait a minute. Oh, it popped off. Uh, I wasn't watching. If I pop off the first element, uh, no, it's it's popping off the bottom, right? Oh, um, so pop is the opposite of append in this case, right? So if I append dwarf again, now I should have two dwarfs. And then if I pop off without an argument, it'll take the last value. Um, and then we, we can also check that by um, list.pop, and I just um, remove uh, and return item index default last. So that's kind of, um, I, I, I see the logic there that you're, you're popping off the end so because you're appending. So I'm surprised there's not a push and a pop for um, consistency. Just like there's a, a append, but not a prepend. All right, so, and then we can remove. So let's see, we've got first at first and dwarf at last. I'm not gonna pop anything off of that, but I'm going to run, okay, yep, we've got first and we've got dwarf. So now we append foo. Um, and we remove foo. Oh, it removes the first foo. The first mash. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we can check the documentation again there. Uh, remove the first occurrence as opposed to pop. So, um, and pop takes an index, not a key. So default to the last at the index. Raise an index error if a list is empty or index is out of range. Okay. All right. So remove will remove the first in the in instance of an element. And we can show that by running here. And it removes the foo at the end. All right. 
that's what happens when I go through and I start modifying their examples. Uh, so is dwarf in this list? It should return true. Uh, is dwarf not in this list? It should return false. That's easy to see. And notice in and not in. Now, um, not is equivalent to the exclamation, but I don't think that'll actually read um, correctly. You can do like not equals. All right, so concatenating and combining lists. You can, you can combine two lists into one, as you can see, and it keeps this tuple as an element. A tuple is an object type that it doesn't mess with. Uh, just like uh, a list inside of a tuple doesn't get broken down unless that list itself is the constructor to a tuple. All right, uh, x equals four none. So you can have different types of lists and you can extend the list with more elements. So we're again, recreating something like this. Okay, sorting list. Sort is a functional list. It will sort it numerically, alphabetically. Um, so you can see here, we changed this key to length. So there are multiple ways that by default, it will sort numerically or alphabetically. So H, F, S, S, A, S, I, S, M. Um, let's see if it'll tell us what, um, what are the keys. Uh, if a key function is given, apply it once. So you've just got to look the documentation to find um, I, I, I just saw, uh, a key reverse. Yeah. And that'll be, um, reverse. Uh, no, but, but I, I, I think reverse is the, is the name of, of the, of the, of the argument. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, a reverse and equivalent to. So reverse is sort in reverse order, the function reverse. Okay. Let's, let's, um, Python sort keys. Um, all right. Um, arguments. What arguments does sort function have? So it takes a function that sorts. You can probably create your own. Um, both sort have keywords, uh, the comparator, the key, and re oh, reverse is an argument. That's what you were saying. That uh, so I can go to go back to my notebook. I want to sort by key equals size in reverse order. So from longest to shortest, right? Uh, uh, Len. Oh, length. Is, the, is, is it L-E-N? Oh, it's the function length that it's passing, right? Okay, so, and I can add another one to show you that that comes up. Okay, great. Um, bisect binary search. Now we're getting into the type of things where data analysis actually is used. And spoiler alert, we're learning all about lists and tuples. And I talked a little bit earlier about switching between lists and tuples and how that can be inefficient. Um, the reason that we have NumPy and associated libraries is because playing around with lists and dictionaries and tuples in Python with large data sets can become slow and um, resource intensive. That's what um, the NumPy library gets around. Um, and you have like MP array. And we'll look into that uh, shortly. But anyway, so all these mathematical computations, which are easy to do on small data sets, uh, small lists and tuples and caches become very expensive as they get larger 
with the default implementations, uh, which is why we're going to learn about these other things. So you can bisect um, and, wow, really go through. So in sort, so we, we are cutting this um, and then we're sorting it internally. So let's, let's go ahead and look at this. Um, L dot bisect, L dot bisect. Um, oh, it's uh, import bisect, okay. It's not uh, something on a list. Bisect.bisect. Okay. Return the index where the insert item X in the list, assuming A is sorted. So you've got low and high. The return value I is such that all E in A sub I have E, L, and or E, X. And so if it already appears in the list, X or I points just beyond the rightmost. All right. This is a good stopping place since we've come to the end of an hour. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording um, and then we can have a quick conversation afterwards.